I have been using AutoCAD for about eight years now and I think I found something which is on the verge of actually replacing it for me and it's an online tool which can actually also create AI floor plans so it does generate floor plans with AI and also takes your 2D floor plans into realistic 3D renders in only 9.8 seconds and we're going to jump straight into it and I'm going to show it to you today step by step. First of all if you go to synapse.app you will land on this beautiful page which I think has a very cool design. We can go ahead and explore some of the features and everything but i just want to go here and show you that it's absolutely free to do drafting and it's only at 35 euros a month if you want all of the ai features which we're going to explore later today so over here you can go ahead and try for free login whichever one uh, you'd want to i have signed up before so i can just log in right here and we will be redirected to this actual dashboard. In this dashboard, you will see you can find the recent models, which I doubt you have any, because uh, if you haven't signed up yet, you will not have any templates you can choose from or any other tutorials. You can see on two of them, that's me. However, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new model. So this is fully web-based, so you do not need to download anything in your computer. So right here, you can see that there is a frame, an empty frame as soon as we go in. Now, basically what this frame is, the fastest way to explain this is that the gray, the dark gray in the back ground is the actual table and the frame is the white canvas on which we're going to draw on or the paper on which you draw on right and then obviously you can resize the frame you can increase it in size or you can use a certain format which is pre-made for us so for example an a3 format and if you get closer you can see that over here we can control the layers and then right here there are pre-made assets for us because we can just drag and drop and not have to draw everything manually like in AutoCAD then over here you can see the prompt bar which we're going to use later on and then we also have here rectangle circle polyline line arc the free pen tool and guidelines which are all basic kind of shapes and then we have pre-made kind of tools for architecture and interior design which is walls uh, the room separator the openings for the doors and windows the annotations dimensions and the camera which takes us into a 3d mode which i'm going to show you later on okay so this frame is an a3 i'm just going to go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger for now over here we can go ahead and select the units there's millimeters centimeters meters and inches feet will be added very soon as far as i'm concerned so uh, let's go ahead with centimeters for now i'm going to choose the wall tool i'm going to click once or i can just activate it by pressing the w as a shortcut i'm going to press once on the starting point and i will go this way for 1400 centimeters which seems like i was exactly there very cool and i will go upwards for about 780 centimeters so seven meters and 80 centimeters and right here we can do the snapping with this wall over here and close it down just like this so now we kind of have the exterior wall set up for us we can select all of them we can add fills so we can choose whatever type of color for the wall that we want to i'm just going to choose a very light gray for now i'm going to make the stroke uh, all the way to darker stroke and make the uh, stroke two points to make them thicker that's way there's a clear hierarchy in the floor plan so now let's go ahead with the interior walls i'm going to go ahead activate the wall tool let's make these only 15 centimeters so for example this can be one interior wall this can be a, another one now we can select all of them and actually move them any way we want them so we can go over here a bit and then we can obviously choose the midpoint of these. So for example, these can be two different bedrooms. Uh, this can be a toilet for uh, the living room, the kitchen area and the dining area over here. And this can be a larger bathroom for both of these bedrooms over here. We can have the kitchen, dining area and uh, the living room right here. So, but let's see how, how we actually organize this. It's all for educational purposes, by the way, this is not a real project. We can move this a bit further down if we want to. And now let's select all the walls. If you go to fill, we can use the eyedropper tool to get the same exact grade. We can go to stroke. Let's go all the way down to black. Let's keep it at two points. Now let's make the line cap to butt. That way these intersect all correctly. This is kind of like the wireframe of what we have here. We can extend this part just a little bit to have some extra space for, for the rest of the living room, the dining area and everything else. And this is kind of how we can uh, assign the, how we're gonna divide the zones. Now, before we do anything else, I'm gonna go here at rooms. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add one room right here. And this way we can divide all the zones and I'm going to show you exactly why this is super useful. This automatically calculates the areas for all of them. Uh, let's just select and drop them like this for now. And for example, if we want this to be our living area, which we can just rename here to living and kitchen area, what we can do is that obviously we don't want it to capture this hallway and kind of corridor area. So what we can do is we can go over here 
at uh, the separator and just draw a separator of the room. So that would be one separator. We can draw another one over here. That way we can divide the actual zones. Now we can just go ahead, choose the room tool once again. And now we're gonna have separate zones for each one of these. So let's just apply the rooms like this. So now this would be the entrance and we're gonna apply the openings in just a second. So let's just go for this one. We're gonna name it entrance. We're gonna go ahead and change the units in which these are measured to meters, which is much better. By the way, you can follow along with inches as well. It doesn't change the process What's the wall? This we can do uh, living and kitchen. We can go over here. This can be the bathroom. Let's make this uh, the toilet. Let's do on this one, we're gonna do bedroom one. And on this one, we're going to do bedroom two. Okay, cool. So before we add the furniture or anything else, what I usually like to do is just set up also the hatches of each space. For the living and kitchen, I'm going to go ahead, click here, we go to fill. This is where we use the actual color of the walls. We can use the same function for filling the actual rooms. Instead, I'm going to go to hatch and I'm gonna scroll downwards to this one, which is a herringbone parquet. And what I will do is I'll just lower the opacity to like 20%. And by the way, if this seems large to you, yes, it is not realistic in terms of size in most of the instances. However, the whole point is here that if we have it like real scale, very small, it will be like the floor plan will look very noisy as you can see. So instead, I'm just gonna use 25 for this. That way it has a clear distinction between the surfaces. Maybe 25 is a bit of an exaggeration, but let's just leave it at 20. And we can leave the opacity very light to 10 because this is further back in the section plane and it should be lighter and not be super emphasized. Then we're gonna do the same thing here at the entrance. We're gonna go ahead and apply a hatch, the same herringbone hatch. For this one, let's just leave the opacity same as this at 20%. Now we're gonna do the same thing for all of the rooms here. So let's go to fill, hatch, choose the herringbone flooring. Let's make it 20. Uh, let's go to bedroom, let's go to um, hatch. Let's make the opacity at 20. In fact, this seems to have even lower opacity at like 10. So let's just change it for all of these. That way they match. I think I misclicked on this one. It shouldn't be the double basket wave. The herringbone at 10% and the same on bedroom one, which is at 10% for now. And then for the bathroom and toilet, we do want tiles instead of like wooden flooring. So we're going to go to toilet. Let's go to hatch. Let's just choose a different one for now. So let's just choose this one, which looks uh, like offset siding is what it's called but we're gonna need this one smaller at like 8x and let's do the same thing for this not the fill we're gonna use the actual same offset siding let's go to 10 percent and let's just make the scale 8. what we're gonna do now is you can see these labels are a bit scattered all around the place we just need a bit of i guess right order in terms of graphic representation so these are a bit easier to read this i'm just going to rename to corridor the entrance let's just leave it at this for now let's leave the bedroom on the same line with these we can have these on the same line we can have these aligned and then uh this for the other bedroom as well so now we have the rooms we have the walls now what's next is uh, let's just add the openings in order to add the openings i can go here i can go to opening or use the shift o shortcut i'm going to add an opening here this needs to be larger at like one uh point 10 meters at like 1.1 meter then i'm going to use the shift o key for another door over here this is going to swing to the right so as you can see we can change the swing the side on where it egresses inside or outside or even the rotation let's use the shift o tool once again the opening tool once again we're going to swing this to the right we're going to leave uh, 60 centimeters here for the actual wardrobe i can basically just go here at rectangle right now i can start a rectangle from this corner all the way to here at 0.6 which is exactly where i left the door you see i have i have um eagle eyes super precise and i can go down here and i can also resize this a bit so let's go over here okay so then that would be the wardrobe or whatever and then we're gonna have the bed here later on we can just add a fill for now this which is going to be at 100 percent uh, let's just make it super or just leave it completely white and let's just make the stroke point Two, maybe even 0.4 because that seems a bit too little. Then let's just duplicate this. I can use Control D to duplicate. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's change the swing to the left. Let's duplicate over here as well. This is where we're gonna have the bathroom. Let's change this to the right. And now this is pretty much it for the doors. Now the doors that we have placed here, I'm going to modify them. I'm gonna select all of them. So I'm gonna to go to stroke and I'm gonna leave them to this darker or like just gray color, I would say. I'm gonna copy this and then let's just leave it at one in terms of thickness. Uh, let's do the same thing over here. Let's select them. 
Let's apply this choke. Let's leave it at one. So now we have the doors, we have the walls, we have the labelings of the room. So as you can see, it's very fast in terms of how we can do everything. It has blocks and you do not have to draw everything manually. So obviously this is going a bit slower than what it would actually go if I just had to do this without actually having to explain stuff. But over here, let's go at the asset library. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop this bed, which seems to be out of scale. Let's just rotate it. Let's bring this closer to here. Uh, let's actually increase it in size so it is up to scale. Uh, let's take this off and maybe we can place it a bit more uh, in the center of the room. So it'd be something like this. Uh, let's duplicate these and let's just rotate them as well. So now we have these two rooms mirrored. Let's move this a bit closer to the wall as well. Let's align these perfectly and we can just move the door a little bit closer here. Obviously, we don't want the furniture 100% to touch the wall. We can just leave a small space between the furniture and the actual walls. I'm going to select the furniture and I'm going to make the outline point four for them. That way they are a bit lighter. And then here, if you go to the toilet, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop this right here. So this would be the toilet. And then we're going to drag and drop this basin. So this we will place right here. Let's add a rectangle from over here. So I mean, the toilet and the bathroom are a bit larger, but let's just say that they're luxurious, spacious. So anyway, let's just go to the solid fill here. Let's add the same fill as we have for the rest of the assets. In fact, this we're going to make it completely white in terms of the fill. This we're going to need to move it down from what I can see that way it is aligned with the bedroom labeling as well. Now let's just duplicate this. I mean, the bathroom is very large, so we're just going to duplicate this to the actual bathroom. Uh, let's just move this a bit over here. We're going to make this countertop a bit smaller and we're going to leave the actual shower right here. So for the shower, we're going to use something like this, just a wall divider, which uh, is going to be a glass wall. So we're going to leave it as a light blue and it's going to be like 0 0.05 in terms of thickness. Uh, let's leave the actual line cap right here. Let's go all the way back. We're going to make it just a little bit wider and then we can just add a shower head like this, which is going to be very fast. So more rectangle, uh, the actual shower line, uh, the actual shower head on top of it. Let's make uh, the solid fill completely white. Let's make the stroke 0.4. We're going to bring this completely to front, 0.4 in this, and let's just put it in the center of this area. Uh, so let me just go ahead and add two three seaters in front of each other. I think I'll extend this wall just a little bit which might actually help with putting in an L-shaped kitchen right here. And even as a bigger divider between the entrance, so like the smells and uh, from the outside and the cold doesn't come directly in. So I'll just leave it to something like this. I could even extend this. I could even extend this further. So this could be some sort of cabinetry. And then over here, I can just add a round dining table Let's add a small coffee table right here. This can be fully white in terms of the fill and then 0.4. Then right here, we're going to add the L-shaped kitchen and we're just going to add a uh, dining table over here. We can just duplicate this. We can rotate it once. Uh, we can duplicate it once again. Let's just rotate it like this. We could just add a small kitchen island if you wanted to right there. It will make it a bit more crampy, but uh, let's just leave it there for now. And then let's just move these so they're, they're aligned right here. Okay, cool. So um, I mean, the design functionality of it is thought about here uh, on the spot. Let's just add an armchair here, something like this. And then we can just add two chairs here for this island. We can even extend the island this way a little bit or even extend it this way a little bit. So we can add at least three chairs, just better for the composition. So another one, let's rotate it a bit. And another one, let's rotate it a bit. Let's just move this over here, this over here. Let's bring this all the way to the front. And we could have something like this here. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and add the windows. So let's get started here. Let's first add a small window at the sink. I'm gonna go here at the openings. Uh, instead of the door, I'm just gonna leave it a window at the type. And that's exactly how we can create the window openings. So this would be one of them. Now let's just duplicate this control D. And the reason why I'm duplicating is that once I make the changes later on into their appearance and stroke, it applies to all of them. Uh, let's increase this in size and I can make the actual dining table in the center. 
uh, with both of these windows. So now here we can just have like one TV place or like TV, which is mounted on the wall. Uh, we can just leave it like this. Let's just make it uh, white for now as well. Stroke 0.4 and 100% in terms of opacity. Okay, now let's just add one of these same windows over here at the shower. Uh, let's just add one here for the corridor, that way it is well lit. And now we'll just need one on each of the bedrooms, which is at about this size. Let's duplicate this too. And then let's uh, duplicate this into this wall as well. Okay, cool. So this is kind of how we can uh, add all of the elements into the floor plan. Now I will go ahead and make all of the assets completely be consistent in terms of how they appear. The fill here, all white, the stroke 0.4. Same here with the dining table. Okay, and then finally, let's go here at the windows. Let's just make these all fully uh, dark pitch black and just leave them like this. Now I'm just gonna add some dimensions quickly just to show you how these work. So it's just super fast and they can be also chained as well. So I'm just gonna add all of these like this for this side. And then we can add one larger one from here all the way to the back. So it would be something like this. Then I can do the same thing over on this side. Let's just make it the same distance. This is for the window and this is for this last part. And then let's just make one larger one. So as you can see, dimensions are there super quickly. So now I can just input the actual topography as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna go right here inside. This is inside the frame. I can resize it to, and then basically what I will need to do here in order to not um, kind of have the hatches and the topography clash here is that I'm just going to add a rectangle in all the parameter of the actual home. I'll make a solid Y hatch at 100% and I will send this to the back. I will go here at the layers and just put the topography all the way to the back now. And this way it looks better. Now, one more thing that I will do here is that I will go ahead and duplicate this rectangle. Let's increase this in size. Let's make this at like 30%. That way we can lower the opacity of the topography here as well. And in fact, this one, what I will do is make the width of this 20. So just adding just a little bit of context here to the landscaping. And then we can go ahead and we can just add some vegetation around. So we can have, for example, some larger tree here in the corner. We can choose something like this over here. Okay, so this is a quick breakdown of Synapse. You can see how quick it is, how you can add assets automatically with drag and drop and how customizable it is. Plus it's on the web, so you don't need a heavy computer. And by the way, it has amazing AI features like the AI floor plan generation that you are seeing on the screen right now as I speak. And also it has the 2D floor plan to a 3D render 9.8 seconds, which allows you to iterate and design much faster, which you wanna see in action and have another tutorial on that, which you can watch in the video right here.